Testing, testing, three, two, one. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Bell. I'm a cartographer and a database designer, and I just really love making maps. Some of you know this and some of you don't. I also work at a company called Esri. Esri makes map making software. And in this video, I'll be showing how to make map point symbols in Adobe Illustrator. Also in the description of this video, I've posted a link to a recent Esri blog post that I wrote showing a great new feature that my team just released this week at the time that I'm making this video. And it's directly related to map point symbols in Adobe Illustrator. So if you're interested, check that out. So this is going to be the first of two videos. And in this first one, I'm going to show you simply how to make a point symbol in Adobe Illustrator and then save it as a symbols library because many of you landed on this video for that particular reason and you just want to cut to the chase. And in that second video in this two-part series, I'll show you how I make cohesive, well-designed symbol sets for maps. So by watching that second video, you'll have a great idea of how to design well-designed symbols that will work together for your map or your map series. All right, so here I am in Adobe Illustrator. When I make symbols, I like to start with an artboard that is no larger than the largest symbol that I'll be making. And the second video will demonstrate the reasons for this. But here we are in Illustrator. I'm going to create a new file, file new. And right here I have in my recent items, a 50 pixel by 50 pixel artboard. I'm going to select that. It's not one of the defaults, it's just one that I recently created, so it's still remembered here. But if you wanted to type in your 50 pixel by 50 pixel artboard, you just select pixels and then type in 50 by 50. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this one. Now we're looking at an Adobe Illustrator artboard that's zoomed in 1,374%. It's 50 by 50 pixels. A tool I like to use a lot is the rulers tool. So to see the ruler on your artboard, you just go to view, rulers, and show rulers. So now we have this zero, zero point at this upper left and the 50 pixels here and 50 pixels here. When I created this Illustrator file, Illustrator put a bunch of symbols in my symbols pane. That's nice of them if I wanted those, but I don't. So I'm gonna remove those from the symbol pane. When I create a symbols library, I only want the symbols that I'm creating for my symbol set. So I want that blank if I'm starting fresh. I'm going to be creating two symbols for parking infrastructure for this symbols library. The first one will be bicycle parking and the second one will be car parking. I'm going to select this bicycle that I created a while ago and paste it, control V, paste it. As you can see, it's a lot larger than my artboard. So I'm going to minimize it so that it fits within my artboard. I'm going to hold shift and alt and then just shrink it down there, zoom back in. I'm holding alt and mouse wheeling in and that's the shortcut I use a lot of times when zooming in and out. And now I need a background for this symbol. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just create a new layer for the purpose of this demo. This isn't typically how I do this, but I have this layer here. And I want all of the symbols, so both of them in this case, of the symbols library to have circle backgrounds. So in your toolbar, wherever you have it, have it over here nested in the left, you might have the rectangle tool. If you click and hold, you can grab all of these other shapes. I'm going to go ahead and select the ellipse tool. So the ellipse tool is really cool. Here it is. I'm drawing this ellipse tool. Um, it's giving me the bicycle fill color, which is um, going to mess up this demo a little. It's going to work, but um, I was hoping it would be whatever. Let's just actually make it that way. Sometimes your default is, that's actually pretty nice. I'm just going to mess up the default a little so the next part of this demo works. Let's just pretend that was your default because whatever your default is, it's probably not going to be what you want your symbol set to be. When I drew this, notice it is an equal circle. It's not just a, a freeform ellipse. A nifty little shortcut is that when you hold the Alt key, you can draw your shape, whatever it is, from the center. And I'm going to delete that. If you hold the Shift key, you draw a proportional or perfect circle, or if you were using the rectangle tool, it would be a perfect square. And I will delete that again. Now, if I hold shift and alt at the same time, it does both of those things, which is really nice. So I have this 40 pixel by 40 pixel circle. I want it to be 50 pixels. So I just type in 50 and I have this constraint locked. So they're both going to be 50. Now I want to align the circle to my artboard. So I just, if you don't have your align toolbar up here at the top, you can go to window, align, 
and it will appear. You can nest it over here, wherever you want. I like to have mine up here. So this selection says align to my artboard, which is what I want when I'm creating these point symbols. And I can align it horizontally to the center, which I already did, and I can align it vertically as well. I'm gonna make the stroke a three point. And notice when I zoom in here, I'm gonna make this a different color because red on red is hard to see. Let's make it dark blue. Okay, so this shows you the vectors you know, the outline. If I were to go into outline mode, it shows you the outline of my shape. When I zoom in, you can notice that this is three points. 1.5 points of that is falling on one side of the outline or the vector, and 1.5 points is falling on the other. Because if you go to the stroke panel, which is again, window stroke, window is always saying, so window stroke, I have it open. It defaults to align the stroke to center and stroke in Adobe Illustrator is the outline of your vector artwork. I wanna align this to the inside and you can see why. Remember, I want the maximum size of all of the points in this symbols library to be 50 pixels and I'll control Z to undo that. If I keep this to align stroke to center, it's gonna be larger than 50 pixels. So I'm gonna redo that, control shift Z, there we go. Now I'm going to make that bicycle visible again. There we go. I like the fill color of the background shape, the circle, I really like it. I think it works well with this bicycle. But I want to make the stroke color of that circle the same color as the bicycle. So I'm going to use the eyedropper to keep the fill color of this shape and apply that stroke color. First, let's just investigate that bicycle. If I go here layer and I select this area next to the target appearance, we go over here and this tells me that the fill color is that color, is that nice blue, but there is no stroke color. It's just a shape. It has no stroke color. It's just fill. It's a closed path in Illustrator. It's actually a compound path. So let's turn this back on and lock that bicycle. In a normal default eyedropper situation, you're applying the exact appearance of whatever shape you clicked. So if I select this circle, I can select it here, or I could have just clicked on it. And then I select the eyedropper tool and I use that eyedropper tool to click this bike. I'll just click it. You can see that I have a circle with a nice blue color and no stroke color. It matches the exact appearance of that bicycle, which is not what I want. So I'm going to undo that, Control Z. So to apply that nice blue color to just the stroke of this circle, I first make sure that the stroke color is brought to the front of this graphic, and you can you can actually click on the fill to bring that to the front, or click on the stroke to bring that to the front, and then I hold Shift with the eyedropper tool selected, and then I click the bicycle. There you go. Now I have that nice matching blue outline line on my circle. And the next video will go into a lot more detail about the workflow for having well-designed symbol outlines. All right, so let's make this a symbol. I'm going to select both of those pieces of artwork and then make sure the symbols panel is showing. And I drag all of that artwork into the symbols panel, just like that. And now I have these options. I want to give it a name, call it bicycle. I'm going to keep it as a movie clip and I want to keep it as a dynamic symbol. Dynamic symbols are a newer type of Adobe Illustrator symbol and they give you a lot more versatility and I just click OK, and there we have bicycle. I think, I'm pretty sure, I've had it this way for so long, but I think the first time you're using symbols libraries, it probably looks for you like this. If you open any symbol library, you can have more than one. I will have one here. So it's just that icon view. I like to have it as the large list view so I can see the name of it. And if you check out that blog post below in the description, you'll see why. Now, when I created this symbol, this automatically became an instance of this symbol. So that's why you have this little crosshair in the middle. I can keep dragging more symbol instances onto the artboard. Here I have three symbol instances of this symbol bicycle, but I wanna create a new symbol that matches the symbol set of this bicycle. So click on one of these bikes, I can delete all of them, and I delete them all, but they're still there because I can just drag another instance of that bike onto uh, my map. Um, I said map because I'm a map maker, uh, but onto my stage, let's just call it. So now I wanna create a matching symbol for parking. So I just, to do that, I right click on here and I say break link to symbol. And so what that did is it removed it from this bicycle. So it's no, you see the crosshair is gone. It's no longer linked to the definitions of this bicycle symbol in the symbols panel. It is grouped though, so I wanna ungroup it. Go, I've ungrouped it and now I'm gonna delete the bicycle and now I just have this background again. I'm gonna make a parking symbol. Where I live, parking symbols are usually just the letter P over a background of a square or a circle or a rectangle, typically. And now I'm just speeding up the process of editing this P so that I have a perfect parking symbol. And then I'm dragging it to the symbols panel so that it becomes an Adobe Illustrator symbol. 
To learn more about how to design your symbols with good rescalable text, make sure you check out that second video. Now the final step is to show you how you can save this as a symbols library. Let's say you have a bunch of symbols here and you want to share these bicycle and transportation infrastructure with people across your company because they're so amazing and you're going to use them on all the maps that you make. To do that, you have your symbols panel open and you go to the hamburger menu at the upper right and you say save symbols library, give it a name. Save. Now that I've created an Adobe Illustrator symbols library, I can reuse those symbols without having to recreate them every time I make a map. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up on database and cartography tutorials. And stay tuned for part two for creating well-designed point symbol libraries in Adobe Illustrator.